In this video, we will be looking at how we can set up a multi-stage tryout analysis within InspireForm. This will allow us to intuitively set up, analyze and visualize the complete stamping manufacturing process from flat blank to finish part. At this stage, we can iterate on our process parameters, tool and blank geometry to improve the process. We can also use our redesign tools to compensate the tools for spring back and predict better blank layout. Hopefully by using these tools, we can create better tools and dies and also reduce the defects in our parts. So in this video, we are focusing on the tryout stage of the software. If you are interested in the feasibility stage, we do have a separate video on that. The software always works left to right. So the first step is to define our blank. We can then apply any constraints or symmetry planes. Next is to define the material. Um, and then we'll be adding our operations. So there's a number of predefined operations in here, and you can also create custom operations. Um, in our example, we'll be doing a single action draw, then a trimming operation, followed by a flanging operation, and finally an adding an operation to analyze for spring back. Lastly, obviously we'll be obviously running an analysis, and then, um, we also do have some redesign tools um, that allow us to adjust the die to counter known spring back and also predict the predict tool, which will allow us to predict the blank shape or trim line using obviously the an an analysis results. We will, won't be going over those in this video, but we will have a separate video which will cover those. So the first step is to import our CAD model. So we've now imported our CAD file. This is a Parasolid file. Just to show you what this file is actually made up of. Um, we've got the, the blank, the flat blank, a surface representing the, the top die and our trim lines. So step one is to define the blank. We always work from a left to right position. So we click the blank tool here. We can choose what sort of blank we're using. If we're using a tailor welded, we can specify that. Um, in this instance, we're just using a single blank and we can click the assign tool. Here we can specify the, the thickness of the material and the obviously the material itself. Um, I'm going to leave these as the defaults, but here we can choose um, the materials we're using. We can see we've got a number of steels, a number of aluminiums. If your material isn't there, we can obviously create um, or import different materials. So I'm going to click the apply button. Next, we can move on to constraints. If we do have any constraints, um, we can apply them. Uh, also, if we've got any symmetry conditions, we can also apply those as well. Obviously, we can add or edit the materials here as well, but now we can move on to the um, operation stage. So if we click the add tool, we can see the different predefined operations that are now here. So we've got gravity forming, crash forming, single action, double action, flange, trim, spring back. And we can also create custom operations as well. So I'm going to add four operations. I'm going to do a single action, then it will go into a trimming operation, then a flanging, and then we're going to analyze for spring back. So in the, we're going to start obviously the left, we can rename these, we can move them around, just drag in and drop them. Obviously, depending on the order is the order that obviously they'll happen in. So um, we can start on the single action here. We can specify the tools. Uh, these are the default tools that we can use. But if you are using any other tools, if you're using pads, dies, cam pads, dies, um, binders, etc., you can add any of these tools and start to actually customize your, um, your operations. We're going to leave this as a default. And I'm also going to show you a great tool that we can use, which is the auto configure tool. So the auto configure tool actually will allow us to build the tools. And in a second, we'll see that we have a top die, now a bottom die, the bottom binder, and our parts. So that's the auto configure tool. Obviously, once you've done that, you can always go into the um, individual tools and modify them. We can obviously modify the positions and we can also obviously modify the, the friction coefficients. Obviously we'll be using lubrication depending on the material and the lubrication used or different friction coefficients will, will, will be needed. Um, so we can obviously modify that to, um, to suit. Um, we can preview the motion. So we can use this tool here to preview the motion. 
and we can use this one here to obviously modify the tool position. So now that's um, that's set up, um, we can move on to the trimming, adding the trimming operation. Once we select our trimming operation, our tools for our single action will disappear. Now we're just seeing our blank and our trimming curves. So um, you can hide the blank and we can see the curves that are going to be used to um, assign to do the trimming operation. So here we can do a trim, pierce or lance. I'm going to be doing a trim and a pierce. So first I'll select the trim and select my trimming curves and click the assign tool. And I'm going to be doing another pierce and specifying those as the pierce curves. So that's all we need to do to set up our trimming operation. You can see here the setup in the left hand side and we can now move on to our flanging operation. So the first step is to actually import a new flanging die and we can import that straight into this assembly and then we can start our flanging operation. We can again customize the tools used and start to assign them. So first of all I'm going to assign the bottom die click the create tool obviously each stage will be able to set up the distance and the uh, friction coefficient then I'm going to set up the top die and I'm going to click the assign tool and then finally I'm going to specify a top pad. Here I'm going to use surfaces and I'm going to hold control and just select these three surfaces here and I'm going to use the partition tool. Again we can specify the forces and the uh, friction coefficient. So that's our flanging operation sort of set up. Again we can use this preview tool to preview the, the motion. And uh, we don't need to do anything for the spring back analysis because we've just added the operation to allow us to analyze that analysis and analyze the spring back. So the final step is to actually um, set up or run, a, run a, uh analysis or simulation. So here we can click this sort of play button and we've got our run options. We can rename our run. And um, this is really our mesh size. So we've got full control over that. Uh, we can control the start operations and again we can just control the animation frames. Once we're happy with that we click the run tool and in a few minutes we'll end up with some results. Once our run is processed we can start to visualize the multi-stage forming process and actually go through the results. To load the results we just click this tool here and this will load in the results. To the right hand side you can see the different operations that we can start to look at. Uh, so here we can see single action, our trimming operations, our flange and our spring back. In each of the operations we can start to look at the different types, result types and start to, to understand how this part will be formed. Um, if we're just looking at the single action um, we can actually visualize this. Um, first of all these are our animation settings. We can change the speed we can actually also animate all the operations sequentially so one after the other and obviously these can be recorded etc so um with the um the first one this is obviously the uh, the single action draw we can hit the play button and we can see how our blank is formed we can then move on to our trimming operation and we can see how the part goes from that and now it's trimmed we can then look at the flanging operation and again, we can see how that is done. And obviously, we can start to look at our results for each type. And then we can look at our spring back. So obviously, in the spring back, displacement might be what you're looking for. And we can start to see areas of the model that has large or small areas of spring back. Once this is done, we can then move on to the redesign process where we can actually compensate the tools. Um, and adjust them for spring back so it will recreate the tools that we've used and then we can also predict predict a um, better blank shapes um, or the optimal blank shapes um, again based on the results that we've got here 
So those will be in a separate video. But that's just a, a short video on how we go through the tryout stage within Inspireform.